Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. My name is Husna Zulkifli. So we are going to continue our lesson. And today's video is on chapter 6. And the title is Plasma Membrane and Transportation Processes. So let's have a look at the general properties of a membrane first. Basically, plasma membrane or cell membrane is made up of a continuous bilayer phospholipid which has protein molecules embedded between it. So this plasma membrane, it acts as a boundary that separates the living cells from the outside environment. So this thin barrier, which is around 8 nanometer thick, it controls traffic into and out of the cells. So this occurs due to its property, which is selectively permeable which means it allows some substance to pass through uh, the membrane easily than others. So plasma membrane consists of macromolecules which are mainly lipids and proteins and also include some carbohydrates. So the most abundant lipids is the phospholipids and all of these constituents, they are amphipathic molecules which means they have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. If you could recall, hydrophobic is the water repel region on the phospholipid, which is the tail part in the middle here, while hydrophilic regions is the portion of phospholipid which is attracted to water or aqueous condition. As mentioned in the previous slide, so the main component of plasma membrane is the phospholipid or also known as phospholipid bilayer. Why it is called bilayer? Because it has two layers of phospholipid arranged together. And now we zoom out to see uh, one individual structure of phospholipid. So it consists of two fatty acid chains that are non-polar. So this make up the hydrophobic region of the phospholipid. And then attached to it is the glycerol. So glycerol and fatty acid make up the uh, lipid structure. And then on top of that, attach uh, a phosphate group. So phosphate and glycerol is the hydrophilic region of the phospholipid. Now, before we go further on the plasma membrane structure, here are some information on the discovery of membrane models. Studies on membrane has been long performed even before it was first seen with electron microscope in the 1950s. And since the discovery, there are quite a number of membrane models uh, that has evolved. So it all started in 1917 when a scientist known as Irving Langmuir, so he discovered that when phospholipid dissolved in benzene, it would form a film on water when the benzene has evaporated. So this is due to the hydrophilic heads that were immersed in water. The evolution continues whereby in 1925, Gotter and Grendel, uh, they found out that cell membranes must be a phospholipid bilayer to molecule thick. So they proposed that this molecule in the bilayer are arranged in such that the hydrophobic fatty acid tails are sheltered in the middle while the hydrophilic phosphate head uh, interact with the water. Then in 1935, we have Davidson and Danieli. So these two scientists, they propose a plasma membrane model in which phospholipid bilayers lies or sandwich between two layers of globular protein, as we can see in this diagram. And this model becomes the dominant model for plasma membrane until the 1960s. Uh, because uh, a few investigation after that has revealed two main problems with this uh, model. So the first one is uh, they mentioned that not all membranes were alike, but they may be differed in thickness, appearance, and also percentage of proteins to lipids. And the second one is membrane proteins are actually not very soluble in water because they are amphipathic molecules. And finally, in 1972, the revised version of sandwich model for plasma membrane uh, has been discovered by Singer and Nicholson. So this model is called fluid mosaic model 
and these two scientists has proposed that protein in the membranes are dispersed and individually inserted into the phospholipid bilayer. So as you can see in this diagram, so the hydrophilic region of protein and phospholipid are in maximum contact with water while the hydrophobic regions are in a non aqueous environment in the middle. And at the moment, fluid mosaic model is the most acceptable model for plasma membranes. The method used to study about the plasma membrane structure is known as freeze fracture. So basically, in this method, firstly, the plasma membrane of the cell will be frozen. And then, using a specialized technique, the phospholipid bilayer will be split along the middle line. And this will allow us to visualize the protein particles that intersperse uh, within the phospholipid. And this technique is used prior to viewing with electron microscopy. So the present accepted model for the plasma membrane is the fluid mosaic model. And as the name suggests, the plasma membrane is mosaic in design. Uh, this is due to the arrangement of the main components in the plasma membrane, which are the phospholipid, cholesterol, protein and also the carbohydrate. And then the model also mentioned about fluidity, so which means here that all of these main components are constantly moving freely uh, in the structure of this plasma. The molecules of the plasma membranes are said to be in fluid state. This is due to the fact that most of the components, especially lipids and proteins, can move. So the movement can either be lateral movement or flip-flop movement. So lateral movement, if you can see from this diagram, example here is the phospholipid. It can move to the right and to the left on the same layer of phospholipid. While flip-flop movement is the movement from one layer to another layer. So the lateral movement is a frequent movement while flip-flop is quite rare uh, movement. In addition to that, larger membrane proteins can also move but their movement is slower compared to other molecules. This is because this protein, they are attached to the cytoskeleton. And there are also proteins that never move because they are attached or anchored uh, permanently to the cytoskeleton. So let me show you where is the cytoskeleton. Okay, so in this diagram, uh, the yellow tube here is the cytoskeleton. So this is the structure which helps the cell to maintain their shapes and also the internal organization of the cell. So there are three factors that mainly involve in maintaining the fluidity of the plasma membrane. So there are temperature, cholesterol, saturated and unsaturated fatty acid content. The first factor that influences the membrane fluidity is the temperature. So when the temperature is cool, membrane will switch from a fluid state to a solid state as the phospholipid become crystallized and they will pack more tightly and closely. And when the temperature is hot, membrane will move apart so this will increase the fluidity of the membrane. The second factor that influences the membrane fluidity is the cholesterol. So as you can see in this diagram, the cholesterol is located in between the phospholipid molecules in the plasma membrane. So when the temperature increases, these phospholipid molecules tend to move away from each other and this will increase the fluidity of plasma membrane. So the function of cholesterol here is to restrain the movement of phospholipid and this will reduce the fluidity. And at cold temperature, cholesterol functions to maintain the fluidity by preventing the tight packing of phospholipid molecules. Next factor that influences the membrane fluidity is the content of saturated and unsaturated fatty acids in phospholipid of the plasma membrane. If you could recall the structure of fatty acid, it consists of hydrocarbon tail. So we have saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. So in saturated fatty acid, there will be no 
uh, double bond between two adjacent carbon. Hence, this will result in straight tail for the fatty acid. While in unsaturated fatty acid, so the hydrocarbon tail consists of double bond between two adjacent carbon and this will cause a band or king in the tail. So for example, we have a decrease in temperature. So what will happen to the plasma membrane is if it consists of more saturated fatty acids, so the phospholipid will become tightly packed and become more rigid membrane. Hence, this will reduce the fluidity. In unsaturated fatty acids, since the tail has skin, this will prevent the tight packing between the phospholipid and will help to maintain the fluidity of the plasma membrane. Okay, looking at this diagram, I would like to repeat myself on the plasma membrane structure. So this is known as the fluid mosaic model. Since mosaic is what we know as something made up of various things or elements that is assembled together, so we could apply the same concept on the structure for plasma membrane. So here the membrane is arranged uh, resembling uh, some sort of design where we can see different proteins embedded in the phospholipid bilayer. And apart from different types of protein that are present, there are also cholesterol and carbohydrate in the plasma membrane structure. The primary component of plasma membrane is the phospholipid, which form the main fabric. However, proteins are the one that determine most of the membrane specific functions. So the plasma membrane and the membrane of various organelles, each of them have unique collections of protein. So there are two types of major membrane protein. The first one is the peripheral protein. The other one is the integral protein. So the peripheral protein, as you can see in this diagram, they are not embedded in the lipid bilayer at all and loosely bounded to uh, another surface protein. While the integral protein, they penetrate the hydrophobic core of lipid bilayer and completely uh, transverse or span through the membrane. The integral proteins are divided into two areas. The first area is the area that are in contact with the core of plasma membrane. This is the hydrophobic regions. So they consist of non-polar amino acids and they are often coiled into alpha helices. And the other area is the area that are in contact with the aqueous environment. So this is the hydrophilic regions of the amino acid. So one of the primary role for the membrane protein is to reinforce the shape of a cell and to provide a strong framework for the cells. So on the cytoplasmic side, some membrane proteins they are connected to cytoskeleton and on the extra sides of the cell, some membrane proteins they are attached to the fibers of the extracellular matrix. And these are also some other major functions uh, of the protein. So they could function as transport, enzymatic activity, signal transduction, intercellular joining, cell-to-cell -cell recognition and also attachment to the cytoskeleton and extracellular matrix. The plasma membrane have distinctive inside and outside faces. This is due to that these two layers may differ in lipid and protein composition. So the outer surface of plasma membrane also has carbohydrates. So if you could see on the previous diagram, so if the carbohydrates is directly attached to phospholipid, it is called glycolipid. And if the carbohydrate is attached on protein, so it is called glycoprotein. So our next topic is on permeability of the lipid bilayer. So plasma membrane has a selective permeability property. It means here that some substances can cross the membrane easily, but some others will have difficulty. And these movements, they can occur in both directions, in and out of the cells. So examples are like 
sugars, amino acids and other nutrients that enter a muscle cells and metabolic waste products that leave the cells. Other examples are also such as uh, the movement of oxygen into the cells while the cells expel carbon dioxide. Some substances or molecules, they can pass through the plasma membrane easily while others cannot. So this is due to the interaction of the molecules with the hydrophobic core of the membrane. Hydrophobic molecules such as hydrocarbon, carbon dioxide and oxygen, they can dissolve in the lipid bilayer, hence can cross easily. While molecules such as ions and polar molecules, they can still pass through the membrane but with difficulty. So these molecules include uh, molecules such as water and glucose and some other sugars. So in order for these molecules to cross the membrane, so they need transport protein to assist the process. So the transport proteins are the protein that span or transverse through the plasma membrane. So some transport protein, they have a hydrophilic channel that certain molecules or ions can use as tunnel through the membrane. So as you can see in this diagram. And some other transport proteins, they bind to these molecules and carry them across the plasma membrane physically. As you can see in this diagram, they are also called as carrier proteins. So each of these transport protein is specific to the molecules or substances that it will translocate or move through the plasma membrane. So for example here we have glucose transport protein uh, located in the liver. So it will carry glucose from the blood to the cytoplasm but not fructose. 